OCD Radio, Fighting Back Together, available exclusively at www.youhaveocd.com. YouHaveOCD.com is proud to present to you How to Get Over OCD, our new step-by-step guide to overcoming OCD. In this book, you will learn what to do when you get an OCD thought, how to prevent new obsessions from occurring, how to overcome new existing obsessions, how your OCD got as bad as it did today, what you can do to never have another OCD thought ever again. This book will show you step-by-step how to overcome OCD. Order now at www.youhaveocd.com. Hi guys, welcome to OCD Radio. I'm your host, Dali. Today I wanted to talk to you guys about avoidance. Avoidance is huge in OCD. It's a very big part of OCD in almost every case. It is one of those things that keep OCD going strong. Just like we talked about reassurance in the last video, avoidance is just as big. It's basically the other side of reassurance. Why is it bad to avoid? Well, when you avoid, you are sending the wrong signals to your brain. You're sending signals to your brain that your fears may come true by doing certain things, when in fact doing those things will not make your fears come true. For example, a person who thinks they may get AIDS worry that they may get AIDS by touching a doorknob. So they avoid touching doorknobs. By doing that, they're sending a signal to their brain saying, Touching doorknobs can make me get AIDS. That's not true. But you send enough of those signals to your brain and your brain will interpret it as as truth. And what if you touch a doorknob by accident after having these type of thoughts and these type of avoidances? You will freak out. Because you will think, oh my god, I touched the doorknob by accident and now for sure I have AIDS. It starts a whole other set of problems. Every time you avoid, you are making OCD worse. You are making your fears more engraved in your brain. Every time you stop avoiding, every time you resist avoidance, you are saying to OCD, I am in control. I am in control, not OCD. I decide what is real and what is not. I decide if my fears are true or not. And they're not true. They're never true. There has not been any case on record where a person who had OCD had a fear and that fear was actually real. Never happened to anybody. So it definitely that was not gonna happen to you this one out of a billion times that you've had OCD because OCD fears always change and new old ones go away when they don't produce any more reaction from you and new ones come and change it. But see, what th- this is another thing about avoidance. You will avoid everything from the old fears and the new fears. So pretty soon you will be like, you know, that movie, The Aviator, where, you know, in the beginning he was fine and he was more or less functional and then he was getting worse and worse until he's, you know, at the end of the movie stuck in that one room because of all the avoidance. You cannot let yourself get to that point. I am talking, you know, not as some sort of a guru or teacher. I'm talking from personal experience. I got to a point in my life with OCD where I was afraid to leave my house. All because of avoidance and started with like little things and then it just added up and added up and added up until I was afraid to do so many things and I was avoiding so many things that it was just easier for me not to leave the house at all. So I would just stay at home. How do you get out of avoidance? How do you stop avoidance? For me, the way I stopped it was slowly, slowly starting with things that are less scary to me i would just you know stop avoiding those some of the time not all of the time some of the time i would avoid when i felt you know exceptionally weak or you know like not in the mood to really deal with the aftermath of not avoiding and then other times where i felt you know strong i would just i would not avoid and you know go for it basically The other thing is you have to remember that once you stop avoiding, your brain will basically freak out because things that you have been avoiding for so long are going to be like, oh my god, you have now just done, you know, something that will cause you whatever, whatever your fears are, your brain will immediately be like, oh my god, now it's going to come true. You have to remember to trust yourself, 
calm yourself back down say no this is exposure i am not doing anything wrong i am not doing anything any other normal person doesn't do for example for me going outside was huge so you know i told myself I'm like you know what other people go outside i can do it too and then you know i went to pay, like because for me it was um being around people that was triggering my ocd especially large crowds you know so i just i started slow i walked down the street then you know i progressed to like a you know, a store, and then a bigger store, and then the mall, and you know, like uh, grocery stores. So you progress. You don't. It's not like you know. Tomorrow you stop all avoidance. No, it's not good, and it's not really a good therapeutic approach. I find because, yeah, it's you know they show it on TV, and you know in those shows like Obsessed and uh, the OCD Project. But you know the reality is you have to go slow because you're just gonna freak out, and especially if you have a full time job or you have you know, kids, or, or you know, um, husband, wife, you, you know, you have responsibilities in your life, basically, you have other people who depend on you for, not just financially, but for love and support, and for you to be there for them, you can't just overwhelm your brain, because what, what will happen is if you stop all avoidance at once, you will freak out afterwards, you will have huge anxiety, and everything that you should be caring about in your life will become invisible to you basically you will be in such a stress you don't want to cause that you want to have you want to push yourself a little bit but not to the point of that because it's all great and good on tv because they're isolated from the real world and real situations but it's it's not like that in real life you have to still survive day to day and be okay. So just do it slow. But the more times you stop avoiding, the better off your OCD will be. And you will notice that those things that you know you avoided so much, when you actually don't avoid them, nothing bad happens. Because they're things that normal people do all the time. You're not doing anything bad. You're not doing anything horrible. You're doing normal things. You're afraid of doing normal things now. But the reality is, for example, for people who are afraid of germs, people don't wash or don't clean their house for weeks, some months, and look, no dust from it. It's not the end of the world. It's nothing to be feared of, especially on that kind of scale of panic. Basically, I want you to come away from this podcast remembering that the less you avoid normal, everyday things, the better off you'll be and the less your OCD will be. Not right away. You, As soon as you stop avoiding, you will feel huge anxiety. But those are the seeds that you're planting that will grow. And they will grow into non-OCD. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, basically. So stay strong. Avoid as little as possible. Live a normal life. Strive for normalcy. If you have trouble understanding what is, you know, what you should avoid and what you shouldn't, the best thing to do is look for people close to you who don't have OCD. Your friends, your loved ones, what are they doing? How, how would they handle the situation? For example, if you're afraid of contamination, how would they handle it? Are they afraid of it? If they're not afraid of it, you shouldn't be afraid of it. That is the best way for you to know what things to avoid and what things not to avoid is to look for others around you anyways that's it for this podcast if you need any more help just email me info at you have ocd.com i'm here for you whatever you need any questions i'll answer if you have any comments about the video please let us know in the comment section we also have a support program you can read all about it on the website if you feel like you don't really have anybody who can support you in uh, overcoming OCD. We certainly can do that. Money is not really an issue in this situation. It's negotiable. We can figure something out. Basically, all I'm trying to do is help others get better. Because I got better and I know it's possible for all of you. Anyways, thanks for listening. Check out my other podcasts and have a great day.